Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Red Essence and welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it and I hope that this video finds you well. In today's episode, we're gonna be taking a closer look at a fragrance by the company Hugo Boss and this one is called Boss Bottled Eau de Parfum. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin my review of Hugo Boss, Boss Bottled Eau de Parfum, I do want to mention that if you are a fan of fragrance-related content, if you like fragrance reviews just like this, but also top 10 videos, giveaways, unboxings, special guests, interviews, and a whole lot more, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. All you have to do is click on that red button in the corner, and of course, while you're at it, please make sure to enable notifications by clicking on that bell icon, so this way, whenever I do upload these videos, they will get delivered straight to your feed. So Hugo Boss, Boss Bottled Eau de Parfum. Now, I have the original, which of course is Eau de Toilette, and with the Eau de Toilette, it has a lot of the same notes. I'm gonna go ahead and read the notes on the back here. It has bergamot and apple in the top, cardamom and sage in the heart, and then in the base you have an olive wood accord and vetiver. Now, when I purchased the original, I did buy it off a discounter, of course. This one I actually purchased at my local Macy's, and I absolutely love the original. I've been wearing it for many, many, many years. The perfumer for that one is Anique Minardo, and I remember initially being very fascinated with her work. I cannot confirm that she's also the perfumer for this one as well, because it just came out. I actually made a trip to my local Macy's a few days ago, I purchased this fragrance. I also purchased the new Coach fragrance. I was on the hunt for the new uh, Spice Bomb Eau de Parfum, the Night Vision Eau de Parfum by Victor and Rolf, but they said they're going to get a big shipment on Monday, so I got to go back to Macy's on Monday. But I saw this one there a few days ago and I said, you know what? I got to purchase it. I'm very excited to have it in my possession. And I thought to myself, how does this stack up to the original? How does this compare to the original? Because a lot of people, when they got into the original, Original, they really appreciated it for that warm apple pie sort of a vibe because it does also have that apple sort of spicy cinnamony quality in the opening and I will say there is a little bit of a crossover between the original and this one of course or else you can't really give it the same exact name I know they have like an intense version and stuff like that they have a lot of these United was another flanker they came out with so they also have a lot of limited edition releases that they've come out with throughout the years if I'm not mistaken but I think this is going to be a mainstay. I think this is going to be a staple. And this is the Eau de Parfum version of Boss Bottled. And of course, they're also taking a page out of many other brands' playbooks, right? You have Bleu de Chanel Eau de Toilette, then Eau de Parfum, then Parfum. You have Dior, Dior Sauvage Eau de Toilette, then Eau de Parfum and Parfum. A lot of other brands are doing the same thing now, and I don't think Hugo Boss is any exception. I'm excited to tell you more about the smell, but let's start with the presentation. So the box has the silhouette of the bottle here on the front. It almost has this gold look to it. I think it's really, really nice. And keep in mind the differentiation between this one and the original is the Eau de Parfum designation that you're gonna to find towards the bottom here. The back of the box has the ingredients in two languages. Feel free to pause your screen if you'd like to read them. And if you are looking to authenticate your purchase, the serial number may be located on the bottom of the box. My serial number is 0150. And here's the bottle. As you can tell, the liquid is much darker than the Eau de Toilette, and it also has this faux metal cap. It's actually plastic, but it does have a metallic look to it. Hugo Boss is engraved into the cap. There is a sticker at the bottom with your information and a lot number that should correspond to the one that's found on the bottom of the box. The cap for this fragrance does click into place very securely. You can pick it up from the cap. And the distribution on the atomizer, is a little bit narrow, but it gets the job done. Let's continue with the smell. So as soon as this fragrance opens up, you are going to get a warm and sweet character from it. And I say warm and sweet because it kind of goes in the direction of a lot of other designer fragrances. Of course, being its own fragrance and not copying anybody else, if anything, they're copying themselves because this is the Eau de Parfum version of an existing Eau de Toilette fragrance. And like I said to you before, I love the Eau de Toilette. You know, it kind of has that spicy cinnamon apple thing going on in the opening. And yes, you're also going to find it in the opening of this fragrance. However, it is supported by some sweet ingredients in the base 
that I don't think you necessarily find in the eau de toilette. So in the eau de toilette, here's what I see happening. It opens up kind of sweet with that apple and the cinnamon, and then as it dries down, it gets a little bit more woodsy. With this one, despite the fact that it has this olive wood accord and it has the vetiver, it also has this coumarinic, you know, vanillic, smooth, slightly sweet, tonka bean-esque base. So it opens up sweet, but then it retains that sweetness through to the base where it has these ambery facets. So it's sweet, and then in the heart, not so sweet, a little spicy, and then in the base, sweet again. So I feel like it's not as much of a of an evolution in this fragrance as you would get from the original. There's not much of a disparity in terms of the olfactory profile of the ingredients in the top and the base, um, but I find it to be a very pleasant fragrance nonetheless. We've seen in 2020, a lot of fragrances have come out and some of them have been underwhelming. Some of them have been exactly what we expected them to be. Some of them have really, really taken us by surprise. What I can say with this fragrance is this is exactly what I expected. When you think of Eau de Parfum and you think about it in comparison to a weaker concentration like a Eau de Toilette, you think of a fragrance that all is also going to be reinvented and reimagined in the sense that a lot of its ingredients are gonna become amplified, they're gonna become stronger. It's gonna be warmer, richer, stronger, and I feel like in this one, there's that added sweetness and that added warmth in the base that really sort of bolsters up all of those more volatile notes that you're gonna find in the top and the heart. So just to go back to the note breakdown, it has that sort of olive wood accord. And I feel like that kind of puts me in the mindset of like an Armani code. Now I can't, necessarily pin it back to any one Armani code fragrance, but if you are a fan of that sort of creamy, smooth, tobacco-y, olive -y, you know, quality that you find in Armani code, I think you might really enjoy this one where it's kind of like a merged you know, uh, boss bottled in Armani code. And I think it's pretty cool. It's pretty unique in that sense. I definitely still get that cinnamony, even though cinnamon is not listed as a note, I still get that slightly sweet cinnamony opening compounded with that red apple note in the opening. And then of course the cardamom and the sage, I don't really pick up on, you know, cardamom has a very distinct smell. I use cardamom in my cooking as well. And I don't get any of that in here. And when you think of designer fragrances, you think of cardamom, you think of La Nuit de L'Homme by Yves Saint Laurent. And I don't get any of that in this. And sage has a very aromatic olfactory profile. I don't get that in here as well. You know, the times that I've worn this one, I have been looking out for that vetiver note. I don't necessarily get vetiver from this either. If tonka bean were listed as a note, that would be a lot more believable and a lot more convincing for me than the vetiver because there's nothing green about this one. You know, you think of vetiver, you think of Mugler Cologne by Terry Mugler. You think of um, original vetiver by Creed. There's some, you know, great vetiver by Tom Ford. No comparison to any of those fragrances. So it's really more of this spicy apple thing going on in the opening. That same smoothness that you find in Armani Code. And then you also have a slightly sweet, ambery tonka bean base that I think really amps up the sweetness in comparison to the eau de toilette. So exactly what I was expecting. I think if you are a fan of the eau de toilette, you're not going to love this by default. I would still recommend that you go out there and you check it out. But if you are a fan of fragrances like Azzaro's Wanted by Night or Invictus Legend or Armani Code Profumo, I would say go out there, check this fragrance out. I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised by it. And what's next in line? Who knows, maybe in another year or two, we're gonna have Boss Bottled Parfum. I'm pretty sure they're already working on it. I'm happy to have had the opportunity to share my thoughts with you. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I do find this to be a unique fragrance. You know, despite the fact that, you know, the sweetness that is adapted in this fragrance is one that is, inevitably borrowed from the trends and what else is going on in the industry. Nowadays, I still feel like it, it plays off of and capitalizes off of that original Boss Bottle DNA. And I do find this to be a very pleasant flanker. I think if you're a fan of the original Boss Bottle, you like it for nostalgic reasons, maybe it conjures up some really positive memories. That's not to suggest that you are going to love this one by default. Definitely go out there and try it. But if you like the sweetness of the original and you don't mind it being a tad sweeter, and a tad 
bit more warm and ambery and oriental, I would say go out, you know, check this one out. You might be pleasantly surprised by it. You know, only you can be the true judge of what works for you and what doesn't, right? But overall smell, very pleasant. There's nothing about this one that is offensive. Is it as mass appealing as a blue fragrance? Probably not, but hey, we're entering the autumn, right? So this is the perfect fragrance for that shift in you know temperature, right? And that shift in seasonality. In terms of the longevity, seven hours on my skin, which is okay. It gets me through my work day, despite the quarantine. And in terms of the projection, it was really good for the first two hours. And then it did start to sit closer to the skin right around that five and a half to six hour mark. So I think the performance is right where it's supposed to be or I should say it's on par with other designer fragrances of the same caliber. In terms of the versatility, I find this one to be pretty versatile. You just have to be a fan of this genre of fragrances, right? There are some people I know they only wear blue fragrances. There are some people I, I know they wear only aquatic fragrances, right? Which is similar to blue. But, um, and this one is kind of in that sort of ambery, oriental, tonka bean, spicy, fruity territory. So you have to be a fan of those types of fragrances to really appreciate this one, but definitely check it out, especially if you're a fan of a lot of the notes uh, that I mentioned that I get quite prominently from this fragrance. But I do find this one leaning in masculine territory. I think this one would work really well for somebody who's early college, all the way up to a more mature, uh, distinguished gentleman, if you will. And I think cold weather is the best time to wear this one. One, for the performance, but two, because of a lot of the notes in here, they're definitely evocative of the colder months. And the presentation for this one, I actually like the gold hardware, despite the plastic cap. It does have a metallic look to it. My final verdict on this fragrance is I think this is a decent release from the company. This is an expected release from the company. Uh, this is the natural progression of things, the natural evolution going from eau de toilette to eau de parfum. And even without smelling it, if you are familiar with the shift in the olfactory DNA of a lot of fragrances like Dior Sauvage and Bleu de Chanel, you can pretty much expect what this one is going to smell like. If you are a fan and you have um, you know, uh, you're a supporter of Hugo Boss, I would say go out there, check it out. If you have any sort of allegiance to the brand, definitely go out there and check it out. And I really hope that you like it. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was my review of Hugo Boss Boss Bottled Eau de Parfum. If you are new to this channel and you appreciated this review, if you took something of value from this video, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. It's easy and it's free. All you have to do is click on that red button in the corner. And of course, while you're at it, please be sure to enable notifications by clicking on that bell. This way, whenever I do upload these videos, they will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. Thanks again for watching. I love you all. We'll see you next time. Bye.